by remembering the past, perhaps it will educate people for the future to be a better person. Survivors want to make sure the world never forgets. But Brown says always remembering can sometimes be painful. Now I'm in Auschwitz and what is happening to me? We are unloaded from this cattle car and I am separated from my mother, whom I saw for the very last time, and so was with my father as well. Not knowing where my mother is going, because at that time we didn't realize that the people who go in the other direction would be immediately killed. A couple of days, couple of whatever time we were there, we still didn't know where our family went. We were separated. So the people who have been there longer, we kept asking, would you know where our families or where the transport, the people from this particular transport were taken? And inevitably, their arm would be raised and pointed to the five chimneys. And they said, that's where your family is. You just couldn't understand such, such, uh, such a situation of the burning people alive. I mean, who ever heard of such a thing? And, you know, they, they're lying. But then there was the evidence, and the evidence was that the chimneys were spewing out heavy black smoke, flame, and the odor of burning flesh is the most horrendous smell that will live with me as long as I live. But despite the pain, Brown says the world cannot afford to stop remembering. She hopes to translate her horrifying memories into an inspirational purpose. That is my mission, to tell the young people to love their fellow men and try to understand. But this picture was taken about five months after our liberation. Northwestern University Holocaust Studies professor Peter Hayes says never forgetting has a purpose for future generations. Some people say never forget in the sense that the Holocaust stands as a warning and if you remember it then you are invoking it as a kind of uh, talisman to, to ward off similar bad things. But today's technology makes it easier to remember. Now, Brown can connect with other survivors, students, and people all around the world on Facebook. I am very much in favor of it, and I'll tell you why. The young people must know that the Holocaust was a horrible experience, and they must know that it was very real, and if they ever meet a denier, they should listen to a Holocaust survivor's story who substantiates the fact that it was very true. Stories like Magda's are being told on Facebook, the popular social media site known for wall posts, photos, and status updates about daily happenings is also a portal to the past. The uh, Auschwitz Museum uh, uh, in Poland uh, 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 launched a Facebook fan page about a month ago to combat an inevitable problem. The survivors are dying out. I am considered among the youngest and I'm 82 years old. so. You can imagine where we are. The loss of survivors means less immediate contact with the people in these pictures. But Hayes says this won't stop the study of the Holocaust. In the modern age, we have an advantage that people don't have when they're talking about the French Revolution. And that is we have film, we have video representations, we have conversations that have, that have been recorded with people. And now there's Facebook a space in the cyber world where these recordings and conversations are centralized. The page's creators wanted to put this new method of remembering at the fingertips of younger generations. Facebook is, is kind of like the new thing these days. Malik is just one of 20,000 members who have joined the group in just one month's time. I noticed on the wall it just said, you know, this is in 40 days on Facebook alone, they already had 20,000 fans. I mean, that just, that gives you a little taste of how important this is. Fans are connecting from all over the world. Germany, Italy, France, and a large majority from Israel. 22-year-old Israeli Ben Bahar spoke via Skype about the importance of the group for his generation. 
Of course I think it helps to connect people. I think it is always good that there is a way to remember the Holocaust. There are young Jewish people who otherwise it would not be possible for them to remember. And it is always good for them to know about it. But while Facebook works to preserve memories across international borders, Malik says it is not the best method for an in-depth study of the subject. It just kind of gives you a taste of, of how big of an impact it had on, on so many people. But Hayes says the Facebook page is no replacement for more traditional forms of learning. I'm an old-fashioned guy. I say read a book. I think this memorial site is a good way for not only young people but uh, also older people who are getting more in tune with the times and um, Facebook usage. And you too can join the group. Just go to Facebook.com and click Log In. Then search for the Auschwitz Memorial fan page. Once you get there, click Become a Fan. And with just a couple of clicks, you'll be a part of the thousands internationally who want to keep the events of the Holocaust depicted in both the history books and on their news feeds. I'm Rachel Leibowitz, News 322.